see what we find. So that's why I double check. Gotcha. Where you cleaned out yesterday. Uh huh. <clears throat> I can go in there. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, just just like uh, wherever this is, right where this is here. Yeah. If you just put like put your ear on the wall and and hear if you hear buzzing. Okay. There's a lot of them are going that way. They're go they're going in behind this and then going in behind that trim. Yeah. But again, I can't see where they're going. I just they just like congregate in there. Where I hear them, or where I can see them going up, is like right, almost directly in the middle of that window down. Like, okay. down, like I can't quite reach from here. Okay. Like down in this area. I mean, they could be under here. Like I said, it's just the. Uh... Right. I just I I don't know what would be the best option would be to go through the wall or go through the siding. Yeah, I know. I mean, the I, siding has to get replaced. But that's so, your decision, not mine. <laughs> like, is is what you're wanting to tear into like that rotted piece? It's just, I mean, from what I can see here, it's, it's rotted. I, I mean. Yeah, but that's totally fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I can get through it. It's, it's just a matter of which one do you prefer I do now? You know, do you prefer I go through the wall or do you prefer I go through the siding? If you, if you want me to do anything, that's, you know. Yeah, no, we, we want you to do. Okay. What do you think, Frank? I think through the siding, but uh, let me get your dad real quick. Awesome. <laughs> All right, you get started. <laughs> All right, something that everybody asks me about in my videos and the comments is why I don't use a scope camera or I should get a scope camera. I have a scope camera, um, but it's not always reliable because I have to drill a hole to be able to get the camera into the wall. And I like to identify that there is a nest where I'm going to be drilling before I drill because I don't want to turn somebody's wall into Swiss cheese. So. Here, I, I knew that the nest was there. I just wanted to just kind of just there cue there in hole. where I had to go with my major hole because they really don't want to make a massive hole. I wanted to just kind of like isolate it. So I drilled, a, 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 a broke the uh, tile, which is going to get replaced anyway. And then I drilled a hole with one of my speedboard bits and then was able to scope the camera in, just kind of identify where within that wall the nest actually was, where the mecca of the nest and then just break the hole from there. So since the hole, or since the nest was kind of off to the right from where that hole was, I just decided, okay, well, that's where I'll make, that's where I make the main hole. So as you read there, now that I've located the nest, time to open the wall, get them out. So I just started hammering to the right of that uh, scope hole. And this is pretty much how it goes. Anytime I do a major removal like this, I have to break open the hole to be able to get into the nest. So my um, my removal style is different than a lot of other guys. I don't just dust a hole or spray it or whatever. Um, I go and physically remove the nest. So this house is being worked on. You can hear banging and stuff going on, you know, down in the in the lower level of the house. Um, these people were gutting this place. So this place is completely empty, and they were going to be retiling. So um, no worries about busting a hole through the wall. Um, of course, picking the better two evils, as you heard in the conversation, they were deciding whether or not to go through the siding or go through the, the tile. Well, this was obviously the better idea because then they didn't have to fix it right away. As if it was outside on the siding, you have to fix it to keep it from getting wet. So there I identified the nest. Um, it was pretty It was pretty big. It was probably about maybe two feet long altogether and about, um, I guess, maybe 18 inches high. Um, pretty much all worker cell. This wasn't quite old enough to have a lot of queen cells in it yet. There were starting queen cells, but they didn't actually uh, have any hatched queens as of yet. There were no reproductives at all at this point. So 
So the first thing that I like to do when I'm removing these nests out, um, and this being a not German yellow jackets, this is a, a little bit more of aggressive species. So I don't like to just reach my hand in um, without knowing um, where the majority mass adults are going to be because they can latch onto my gloves. They can you know, latch onto my sleeve and potentially find a way to sting me. And I try to avoid that at all costs. But, um, you yeah, know, sometimes it's inevitable. See, like right there. So that's a mecca. That is something I really don't like to reach in without having vacuumed them up first. Because um, I don't like grabbing a handful of insects that could sting my hand over and over and over again. So if I were to grab that and they were to get their stinger into the seam of my glove, um, they could do a lot of damage on my hand. And I really wouldn't have any means to keep them from stinging me until I actually just started sucking them up with the vacuum. So I'm usually pretty conscious about when I have to stick my hand in the wall like that. So I kind of thought maybe this was it for the for the nest. I thought maybe that was just about all that I had to get out, the rest of it just being envelope. Um, then I reached my hand up in there and I felt more. So the last like four inches of space up to the um, windowsill was all nest. So I had to just pull that out piece by piece. Um, I didn't want to make the hole any bigger than that. Just because I, you know, I didn't want to have to have, even though they're going to be repairing this and replacing the tile anyway, I just wanted, I didn't want to make a bigger hole than I had to. So if I can just make a hole big enough to get my hand in there, get the mess out, that's that's really all I need um, for the sake of the removal. I think that was just about the last bit of comb that I had to pull out. I'm just reaching into the walls just to see if I can feel any more comb. Um, I do scope it a little bit later. Um, I don't have that on camera. Um, just to make sure that I got most of it, if not all of it. So you can see it's just latched on, stinging. So what they usually do is, um, pretty much all yellow jacket species, they, they, they pinch with their mandibles to latch on, and then they just sting over and over and over again as many times as they can. And I've actually sprayed them with black flag while they were on my sleeve or on my suit, stinging, and just just totally disregarding it. I mean, just they just die in the stinging position. That's just how... Just ruthless they are to protect their colony. And this is actually the second nest that I removed from this property. Um, one of my earlier videos in the season here um, was the first one I did. It was actually a, a German yellow jack nest that I relocated to my house and I uh, had it in a Rubbermaid bin. Um, you guys can go back and check out those videos if you want. And they, um, that nest lasted the entire season. It turned out to be a massive. Um, they re-enveloped it because I had pulled most of the envelope off to get it out of the cavity. It was the first German yellow jacket nest that I relocated. And now in my wood pile, I'm finding all their queens. So, <laughs> so this isn't a small bathroom. So I had the door closed. It was a pocket door. I had that closed. So... Any adults that fly out of the wall go right to the window. For all of my indoor removals, that's what I do. I just leave a window um, shining bright with the sun, and they always fly to the window. So there's a lot of questions and comments about why I uh, why I let them fly around, and that's why, because I can just vacuum them up at the window.
and that's the whole co that's the whole nest right there. Got me. Ouchie. <laughs> Even though you get the nest out does not mean that you're immune then to not getting stung. Got me right on the knee. They always get me on the knee. So actually this was pretty early in the season. So once I got stung in the knees about three or four times, I decided to start wearing knee pads underneath my suit. So that's pretty much what I do now. I always have knee pads on. Unless it's like bald-faced hornets or European hornets, I don't wear knee pads. But for uh, latching yellow jackets like this species and um, southern and eastern yellow jackets where I'm always on my knees, I always have knee pads on. So enough fooling around. Just figured, you know, at that point, I'll just vacuum up as many as I can, get the area cleaned up, and, uh, and then get out of Dodge. So after I'm done with that, even though all the buzzing you were hearing inside were actually adults that were just in envelope and just at the bottom of the wall um, at the entranceway. So I just sprayed that in there with um, fogging, black flag spray, flying insect spray, and, um, and it would just kill the rest of the adults that are inside the wall that I can't get to with the vacuum. So they'll die in there, and then I sealed up that wall with some duct tape just to kind of keep it closed up so they didn't have any adults flying around if any of them were to uh, make it past the black flag in the meantime until they died. So I always like to just double check everything, make sure that the spray has killed, killed a majority of the nest, or majority of the colony that is, and uh, just double check everything. Clean up all my tools and then I'm done for the day. One more spray for good measure. Make sure I got them all. Seems good in the hood. Got the job done. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you have suggestions for future videos or something you'd like to see me cover in an upcoming video, also drop in the comments. Let me know. My casting video should be up and running here probably in the next week or so. Um, I'm casting a nest in epoxy for my first casting video. So you guys can see what that looks like along with a couple of adults. Um, but it's just taking a little longer than I anticipated because I have to coat everything. Um, I had a lot of trial and error, but I had to coat the nest in a clear coat first because the nest uh, cellulose was leaching color into the clear epoxy and it was staining it and it looked horrible. So a lot of trial and error. I don't, I've never really done that kind of a casting before and, um, and I'm not trying not to watch any videos on it because I want to try to do it myself. So just bear with me until I get that video out, but I'm really excited to show you guys because the casts are coming out freaking awesome. All right, guys, if you guys haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and hit the bell notification down below. That way you guys can get updated anytime I do post a video. And if you're continuing subscribers, thanks so much for tuning in to check out my videos and supporting my channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Chased by the yellow jackets and cracked me up.
it's ridiculous. <laughs> like a random bald-faced hornet over here, too. <laughs> 